Hello and welcome to the Kingpin Crime YouTube channel. On today's video, it's a man who would spend around 42 years in over 20 different prisons during his career. Known as a violent bank robber, bodyguard and enforcer, who was involved in the famed London torture trials as a result of his alleged involvement in the torture of gang rivals. This is the story of Mad Frankie Fraser. Fraser was born on the 13th of December 1923 on Cornwall Road in Waterloo, London. His mother was of Irish and Norwegian descent, while his father was half Native American. Fraser was the youngest of five children and grew up in poverty. Although his parents were not criminals, Fraser turned to crime aged 10 along with his sister Ava. A deserter during the Second World War, he first became involved in serious crime when a lack of professional policemen due to the conscription, blackouts and rationing provided ample opportunities for criminal activities, such as stealing from houses while the occupants were in air raid chillers. In 1941, Fraser was sent to Borstal for breaking into a Waterloo shop and given a 15-month prison sentence at HMP Wandsworth. Such were the criminal opportunities during the war. Fraser joked in a television interview years later that he had never forgiven the Germans for surrendering. In 1942, when serving a prison sentence in HMP Chelmsford, he came to the attention of the British Army. Although he was then conscripted, Fraser boasted about how he would ignore the call up papers, desert and resume his criminal activities. After the war, Fraser was involved in a smash and grab raid on a jewellery shop, for which he received a two year prison sentence, which was mostly served at HMP Pentonville. It was during this sentence that he was first certified as insane and was sent to the Cane Hill Hospital before being released in 1949. During the 1950s, Fraser worked as a bodyguard to well-known gangster Billy Hill, and after being sent to HMP Durham for multiple bank robberies, he was again certified insane, and this time sent to Broadmoor Hospital, where he stayed out of trouble being released in 1955. The following year, the British mobster Jack Comer and his wife Rita were attacked on Hill Say So by Fraser, Bobby Warren and at least half a dozen other men. Both Fraser and Warren were given seven years for their acts of violence. His career would progress in the early 1960s when Fraser first met Charlie and Eddie Richardson of the Richardson Gang, who at the time rivaled the Cray Twins. According to Fraser, it was they who helped him avoid arrest for the great train robbery by bribing police. Together, they set up the Atlantic Machine of Fruits Machine Enterprise, which acted as a front company for the criminal activities of the gang. Then in 1966, Fraser was charged with the murder of Richard Hart, who was shot and killed at Mr. Smith's club in Catford. A witness later changed his testimony, and the charges were eventually dropped, with Fraser then receiving a five-year sentence for a fray instead. He was also tried in court in the so-called torture trial, in which members of the Richardson gang were charged with burning, electrocution and whipping those found guilty of disloyalty. Fraser himself was accused of pulling out teeth of the victims using pliers. Following the trial at the Old Bailey in 1967, he was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. His various prison sentences were often coloured by violence. He was involved in riots and frequently fought with prison officers and fellow inmates, even attacking various governors in his time. Fraser was one of the ringleaders of the major Pankhurst prison riot in 1969, spending the following six weeks in the prison hospital because of his injuries. He then spent time in Strangeways, Manchester, in 1980, being released in 1985. In 1991, Fraser was shot in the head from close range in a murder attempt outside the Turnhills Club in Clerkenwell, London. Part of his mouth was shot away in the incident, but he refused to discuss the shooting with police. In his later life, Fraser became a minor celebrity of sorts, appearing on television shows such as Operation Good Guys, Shooting Stars and the satirical show Brass Eye. He would also go on to write and publish his autobiography. In 1999, he appeared at a theatre in London in a one-man show, An Evening with Mad Frankie Fraser, directed by Patrick Newley, which subsequently toured the UK. Fraser also appeared as East End crime boss Pops Den in the feature film Hardman, 
a forerunner for the British gangster movies such as Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, and had a documentary made of his life called Mad Frank. Fraser gave gangland tours around London, where he highlighted infamous criminal locations such as the Blind Beggar Pub. Fraser was an Arsenal fan, and his grandson Tommy Fraser is a professional footballer, with another of his grandsons, James Fraser, also spending a short time with Bristol Rovers. In parallel, however, another grandson named Anthony Fraser was being sought by police in February 2011 for his alleged involvement in a £5 million cannabis smuggling ring. Fraser was a resident at a sheltered accommodation home in Peckham, and according to Eddie Richardson, he had Alzheimer's disease. In June 2013, the 89-year-old Fraser was served with an antisocial behaviour order by police after a row with another resident. Then on the 21st of November 2014, he fell critically ill during a leg surgery at King's College Hospital and was placed into an induced coma. On the 26th of November, however, Fraser died after his family made the decision to turn off his life support machine. This concludes the story of one of the most infamous figures in London's history of organised crime. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share.